I'm going to show you how to create this cool main menu. We're going to add the cube, then we'll animate it to navigate between the different uh, menus so that we can go to the settings and adjust the volume as an example. We have this icon to go to the info and check the information about the game. Of course, you could replace it with a shop button so that we can go to the shop menu and select a character. In the middle, we have the start button to start our level. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button, that helps me a lot. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. So here we have an empty project with an empty scene. I'm gonna start by adding the cube under the hierarchy using right click 3D object cube. I'm gonna leave the name as it is and hit enter. We have to reset the transform. Also, I want to change the scale to three. You could also adjust the main camera position and transform by changing the Y value and the X rotation. I didn't like the sky box. Let's change it to solid color and select the color that you want. Next, we have to add our buttons like the start button. Let's go under the hierarchy and right click UI and use a button with a text mesh pro. I'm gonna call it start button or start. So by default, all of the UI elements are inside a canvas that is on the screen. We can change its position like the cube and rotate it. But if you select the canvas and change the render mode from screen space to world space, we can move it in our scene and reset its position. I'm gonna use zero on the X and the Y. As you can see, it's a little bit big. We can adjust the scale to 0.01. If you go to the scene view and double click on it, you see it's inside the cube. Let's move it along the Z axis so that we can see it in front of the camera under the game view. We could also change it from the inspector. But if we try to rotate the cube around the Y axis, you see that the button is in the same position. If you drag the canvas under the cube, it's gonna rotate with it. Let's try it again. And there you go. We're gonna use animations later on to navigate between these menus. But first of all, I want to adjust it a bit. Let's select the start button and change the text inside it to start or play. I want to make it bold and increase the font size to 28. I highly recommend you to play around with these settings, like increasing the height of the button as well as the width. Finally, I will use another image as the background, like this one. In this video, I'm not gonna add the logic to start the level. I will only focus on the animation of the start menu. Next, I'm gonna create the settings button on this side. And whenever we click it, we are going to rotate our cube to this side so that we can see the settings and adjust the volume. To save a little bit of time, let's duplicate the start button using Ctrl D and rename it to settings. Then let's move it along the X axis by changing the pose X like 108 and change the width to uh, 55. But here I'm not going to use the text. I have these icons that I'm gonna put under the settings button. Let's get rid of the text mesh pro and right click UI and use an image. Let's call it icon. To make it fit inside this button, I will select the square by holding shift alt we have this fill option, then we can drag our sprite. On the other side, I will add another one so that we can go to the info and check the information about the game, but you could use it for a shop button so that we can go to the shop menu and so on. To do that, I will duplicate these settings using Ctrl D. Let's change the name to uh, info and move it to the other side. By adding minus, you see it's much easier to duplicate the button we only have to change the icon to the new one. And let's give it a try by hitting play. Now, if we select the settings button, nothing happens. The same thing for the other ones because we haven't added the logic to rotate the cube whenever we click on this one or the info button. Here you have two options. You could create a C-sharp script that changes the Y value so that we can rotate it or we can use animations. I think it's a little bit easier by default, we have to be in the start menu. Then we are going to adjust the Y value so that we can go to the settings and we have to get back by rotating it to the opposite direction. To do so, we have to select the cube and animate it by going to window, animation, and we have the animation window. Let's create our first clip using create. Let's call it start and hit save. The easiest way is to create one keyframe for each position and we're gonna use the animator transition 
to smoothly move between these rotations. Let's start recording using this button. To create our keyframe, we can adjust the Y value a little bit and give it back to the value 0. And there you go, we have these dots. Now we can move on to the other clips by selecting Start using Create a New Clip and give it the name Settings. And in this case, I'm going to use 90 on the Y axis. But you see the keyframe is not saved because we haven't hit record. Try to adjust a bit and use 90. Finally, we can create our info clip so that we can go to the info. Make sure to go to the first keyframe and use minus 90. I think that's all what we need. Under our assets, you will notice that we have these three animations as well as this component, which is called the animator component. If you double click on it, our animator window pops up. Here we have the three animations. By default, we have the start one, and that's what we want. But if we click the settings button, we need to transition from start to settings. And the way we do that is by adding a transition using right click, make transition from start to settings. Then we have to set a parameter or a condition for this transition so that we can control it. And the way we do that is by adding a parameter under the parameters tab using this plus icon. Here we have different options like a trigger that we can set from our button whenever we click it. Let's select this option and call it two settings. Then we have to set it for our transition. From the inspector, we have these conditions. By default, it is selected because we have one parameter. But we need to be able to get back to the start menu by adding a transition from these settings using make transition to the start. The same thing we have to set a parameter so that we can use it later on. I'm gonna call it to start and make sure to select it from the conditions. I'm gonna apply the same process for our info clip using a transition from start to info and we have to get back. Then I'm gonna add uh, one parameter and call it to info and use it for this transition. Whenever we set this trigger, we are going to go to the info uh, section. To get back, I'm going to use the same one that is called start. Sorry, it is called to start. Make sure to remember that. Now let's use it for our buttons. If you select the settings button, under here you see this section that is called on click, which contains all of the functions that will be called whenever we click our button. We can add a new one using the plus icon. In our case, we are going to change the trigger that is under the cube. We have to drag it. And from this option, no function, we have the animator component. Here we have different methods that are related to the animator. We are going to focus on this one that is called set trigger to set a trigger that we have created under the animator, like the two settings one. I'm going to copy it. Make sure to use the same string and paste it under this field. By default, we are inside the start menu. Let's hit the settings. And there you go. At this point, I haven't added a back button so that we can get back. Before that, I'm going to add the functionality for our info icon by adding a new on click event and dragging the cube. We're going to use set trigger. And the trigger in this case is called to info so that we can go to the other side of the cube. Before I finish this video, I'm going to add the functionality to get back to the start menu. But I'm not going to add the settings options like changing the volume. I've created a separate video for that. Basically, we can duplicate this canvas using Ctrl D and put it to the other side. So let's go ahead and rotate it and move it to the side by setting the Y rotation to minus 90 and move it using these arrows. I'm going to use this button as the back button. Of course, we don't need the settings and the info buttons again. Then I want to change the text to back and use the same name under the hierarchy. Let's move it down a bit so that we can have a little bit of space for the settings options. Whenever we click our button, we are going to access the animator component by dragging the cube and select the trigger start that we have created, which resets our cube position so that we can go to the start menu. Now it's going to be much easier. I will duplicate this back button or the canvas and move it to the other side because we have the same functionality to get back to the start menu. The text is flipped. Let's change the rotation to 90, not minus 90. If you knew the mistake that I have made, you are a smart person. So under the animator, I've called the parameter to start, not start. We can select both of these. 
and change this to the same name to start. Now I can go to the settings. Also, I can get back. Of course, we can go to the info and get back again. I think it's really cool. So if you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one.